It is March 11th, 2010. I am Joshua P. Warren in the Lemur Lab, surrounded by the Lemur team. And you are about to see a reproduction of the experiment that we did in 2004 that earned us the cover of the Electric Spacecraft Journal. We have an industrial vacuum here, and we had an acrylic tube that was custom made for this experiment. The purpose of the experiment is to show you how the independent plasma manifestations similar to ball lightning can be produced. This acrylic tube has a wall thickness of a quarter of an inch. It's about four and a half inches in diameter. And what's so special about this is the three electrodes that we have arranged. If you look on the bottom, you'll see one wire. That is one electrode. If you look on the top, you'll see another electrode. But on the side, you see an array of electrodes that are positioned at different angles. Now we're preparing for a Discovery Channel special right now. And the idea behind this is to show the Discovery audience and you that even though in most cases all electronic components have a single screen of charge that flows from one electrode to the other, if there is a third electrode at the right angle, it will produce what is called an interference pattern. And we are going to produce what is also called an electrostatically uh, contained plasma because when we introduce the interference pattern from this electrode, you'll see that in the middle between these two primary electrodes, one and two, there will become what appears to be an independent plasma. It's similar to ball lightning. Now we think this explains ball lightning and other similar plasmas around the world. We have a power supply here that is going to produce about 1,200 volts of DC. It also is going to give us about 10 to 25 milliamps. And we're going to get a vacuum in this tube of about 2 millitor. Now the reason that we're doing this in a vacuum is because we can't compete with the voltage that Mother Nature produces. Therefore, to compensate for that, we're lowering the atmospheric pressure in this tube so that the voltage we can produce is comparable to what Mother Nature might be able to produce. It is dangerous. The first thing we want to do is turn the vacuum on and make sure that we are able to get about two millitor worth of pull. I don't know if I need them, but I better get some gloves just in case as we introduce the power supply. The amount of voltage will increase and decrease based upon the amount of vacuum in the tube. So we're going to go ahead and get this vacuum started. Is everybody wearing goggles? Everybody safe? Here we go. Extreme vacuum is being created within this tube. And we're going to wait for it to get up to about two millitor. It's slowly rising. We're almost there. 
Now, two millitor is similar to what you actually might find inside an incandescent light bulb. Okay, we are now at two millitor. Now, I don't want to interfere with the experiment, but if I tried to pull this thing off of here, it would be uh, impossible. Now, I'm going to introduce a DC supply of voltage. For this, we're going to turn off the lights. Okay, let's turn the lights off. I'm now manipulating the voltage to find just the right spot when these shells or ripples will produce an independent plasma. And you can already see it right there. Right there. We had an independent, so to speak, plasma hovering between those two electrodes. That's actually the product of what's called interference pattern. There you see it again. Now we have a number of them. So on the bottom, we have electricity flowing through. On the top, we have electricity thrown, uh, flowing through. But the side electrode is simply ground. And that interference from that third ground electrode is giving us this incredible display that we're seeing right now. Lights on, please. We'll let the, apra, the entire apparatus cool down, but obviously, as you can see, we have demonstrated that two electrodes with a third electrode as interference can create what appears to be an independent plasma. And this explains ball lightning phenomenon, what's probably happening at Brown Mountain, and many other so-called paranormal